Hi everyone, uh, this is Ankush and uh, today we'll be discussing the problem that we posted last time. The problem basically states that we are given a string and we have to check how many substrings of this string are palindrome. So what is a palindrome? A palindrome is basically a string which reads the same if you read it from the beginning or you read it from the end. Let's say this string. Now if I read it from the beginning it's ABBA. If I read it from the backside it's ABBA as well. So it's basically a palindrome. Another way to say that something is palindrome is if the first character is equal to the last character, second character is equal to the second last character and so on. This property should be satisfied for all the characters till the middle point. Then you can call a string as palindrome. Okay. Now anytime when you're given a problem like this, the first thing that you should be doing is that how can we solve this? Let's not worry about trying to find an optimal solution. Right now we should think about finding a solution. And as soon as you have a solution, we will see what is the time complexity of this solution and then we'll try to think of a better solution. And that is true for interviews as well. Whenever as an interviewer, I'm asking you a question, the first thing that I'll, I'm looking for is a solution. Whether it's an optimized solution or not, that we can worry about later. It's much better that you give me some solution rather than giving me no solution. So let's quickly discuss one solution that quickly comes to our mind. I think the first solution that comes to my mind is let's find all possible substrings and let's check for each of those substrings. Let's check if they are palindrome or not. Right. So pretty straightforward approach. Basically what we need to do is find out all possible substrings and for each substring check if it is palindrome or not. Okay. So that basically has two uh, parts. The first part will be finding all substrings. Okay, so your function will look something like this. You will have, you'll have to return an integer, number palindromic substrings, right? You will get, let's say a string str. This is a pseudocode, don't, uh, I'm not going to uh, very strictly follow C++ or Java, this is pseudocode, you should be able to understand what I'm trying to say. Okay, so I'm given a string and I want to check, so basically what you want to do is, you want to find all possible substrings for all substrings, you want to check is palindrome a given substring. So if it is palindrome, you will do some kind of count plus plus. So for each substring I'm checking if that substring is a palindrome or not. And if that substring is a palindrome, I'm doing a count plus plus. Okay. So I'm not going to write code for uh, finding all the substrings, but I'm going to quickly write code for is palindrome. So this is a function which I think should return a bool, right? It should tell me whether the input was a palindrome or not. It will get as an input a string. Okay, so so it will get a string str, and what you need to do is you need to check whether the string is a palindrome or not. So I'm going to follow this approach. I'm going to try if the first character is equal to the last character or not. If they are not equal, I'll return false. If they are equal, I'll check for the next one. If they are not equal, I'll return false. If they are equal, I'll check for the next. So what I'm going to do is, I'll take an int i, which is equal to zero, and I'm going to take an int j, which is equals to, let's say, str.length. I'm assuming there is a function which tells me what is the length of my string. Now, I'm going to keep repeating this till the point my i is less than j. As soon as my i crosses my j, that basically means I've checked for the complete string. So my condition is going to look something like this while i less than j if they are not equal I am going to return false if they are then you basically just do i plus plus and j minus minus you do a j minus minus and you close your while loop Okay, so if you reach this point, that basically means that you checked for all possible i and j's and you never got a non-equal characters because as soon as you would have reached a 
a non-equal characters you would have returned false so if you reach this point that basically means you never got conflicting characters that means you can return true right so that's a pretty straightforward uh, implementation of is palindrome okay now let me move to a new note okay so now let's try to think how good or bad that solution was basically what you were saying is you will find all possible substrings and for each substring you're going to call is palindrome now what do you think will be time complexity of is palindrome what is it trying to do it's basically trying to check this character and this character it's trying to check this character and this character so it's basically running through the whole length so i think this is going to be an on function okay so if the string length is n it's going to take o of n time okay now how many substrings do you have i think it's again pretty straightforward you have one substring which is of length n that is the whole string how many substring do you have of length n minus 1 i think there are only two possible substrings like that either you can get not take the first character or the last character that are the, those are the only two options where you can take a length of n minus 1. Similarly for n minus 2 you will have 3 length and so on for length 1 you will have n substrings. This summation is very familiar to us it's n into n plus 1 by 2. That means we have order n square substrings and for our palindrome function takes o n so for these n square substrings you are doing o n work so that basically means our solution is O of n cube. Okay, so now we have reached somewhere. We are able to solve this problem in O of n cube. Now the next step should be, can we improve this? Okay, so if you look at our solution, what basically what, what, what we are actually doing here is, the problem why it's taking so much time is, once we have checked that this character is a palindrome, to check this string, it should not take a lot of time because you just need to check this character and this character but what we are actually doing we are going through the whole string again now if you know that this is this this part is a palindrome checking for this five length string should not take that much time you should just need to check this and this character okay so what i am trying to say here is instead of taking all possible substrings and trying and checking for all of them, what we are going to do is, instead, what we are going to do is, we will go to each character in this string and we try to find how many substrings are there which are centered at this character and our palindromes. So this in itself is a palindrome. Now to check if this is a palindrome, I'm going to increase one, one in each direction and I'm going to check this character and this character. If they are not same, this cannot be a palindrome so i don't have to move forward this has to be a palindrome for this five length substring to be a palindrome but if the three one is a palindrome i'm going to check for the five length one as well to check for the five length one you just need to compare this character and this character because you already know that this three length one is a palindrome okay so let me just repeat it again what we are planning to do is for each character in your substring we will assume that to be the middle character and we will try to expand in both the directions till the point we don't get a character which does not match to its counterpart and as soon as you get these two characters you can stop you don't have to move further down okay i think that way is you will get all the substrings which are palindrome centered at this this way i can get all the substrings which are centered at this all, all the substrings of palindrome are centered at this and so on and I'll get the total number okay so let's quickly write code for this so I will first try to center at the first character till str dot length i plus plus now for each of these characters what you need to do is for each of these characters you need to try and expand in both directions 
So what I'll do is I'll take a j which is 0 and I'll try to expand j. Now I can expand j as long as i minus j is greater than or equal to 0. That means I'm not crossing my boundary here and i plus j is less than string dot length. As soon as any of these conditions are violated that means I'm about to cross the boundaries. I'm not going to do that. So j plus i should be less than str dot length and also i minus j should be greater than or equal to 0 and I'll do a j plus plus. I'll maintain an answer outside which is 0. Now if str i plus j not equal to str i minus j. What does that mean? That means that you have found as many substrings possible for this i. Now you need to move to the next i. So you can break the inner loop. So I'll put a break here. I'll put a break here. And if this if is not Satisfied if this condition is not satisfied, I can say answer plus plus. This is the first for loop and this is for the next for loop. So what we are basically doing is for this i, what's going to happen? J is equal to zero, right? We are starting with j is equal to zero. So we are looking at i plus zero and i minus zero. So we are looking at this in itself. We're going to compare this character with itself. So that's obviously equal. So we're going to do answer plus plus. Now, as soon as you do j is equal to one, i minus j has become minus 1. So we will not go into this for loop again. Now we'll move to the next one and for this one we will check whether this character is equal to itself and then we'll check whether this character is equal to this and so on and we'll get our answer. Now this is almost complete except there is a small problem. Now let's quickly look at another example let's say ABBA. What's going to happen here? You will keep this as the center and you will get only this as the substring which is centered at A. Why? Because you cannot expand on the left side. Now next you will keep this as the center. This obviously is a palindrome but then A does not match with B so you cannot expand further. Now when you keep B, this B as your center you cannot expand further because this B is not equal to this A. And for this A, again, we are about to breach the right side boundary. So we will not find anything for this A as well. What have we missed? We have missed this whole ABBA as well as this BB, which is in the middle. So we are basically missing all the even length palindromes. The solution that we have written works really well to find all the odd length character or odd length palindromes, but it does not find even length palindromes. It's pretty straightforward to solve this. What you actually need to do is, when you are taking an i, compare it with i plus 1. And then add j in this and subtract j into this. So basically, when we were taking one character as the palindrome, now initially we were comparing this with itself and then comparing this and this. Instead, what we should do is first compare this character with this character and then try to expand further. I'll just show you the code for that. Okay, so now I've just written uh, another part, this part. This basically calculates all the even length palindromes. It's this code and this code are almost the same. If you look closely, the only difference is this j plus i plus 1 instead of j plus i. Similarly, I am comparing i plus j here, I am comparing i plus j plus 1 here. So what I am actually doing here is, the first time when I compare, let's say i is equals to 5, j is equals to 0, what I am doing is I am comparing 5 plus 0 plus 1, sixth character with the fifth one. So i minus j, i minus j is 5 minus 0, so I'm comparing 5th character with the 6th one. So, 
the fifth character is getting compared to the sixth one. So I'm trying to find an even length one. Now when j goes to one, i plus j plus one becomes i plus j plus one becomes five plus one plus one which is seven and i minus j basically becomes four. So you're comparing seventh character with the fourth one. So previously we were trying to expand in a way that we had one character, we were going to three characters. Now what we're trying to do is we are trying with two characters and we are trying to go to four characters. So that's the only difference between both these. You can have a closer look, right? And I'll be posting uh, the code for this as well on Facebook. So you can have a look at that as well. And I think that uh, if you look at closely on this one, basically you have two for loops. This one is running for the length. This one is running till the length. So you have all n square, which the above this odd length one is taking. And again, order n square is what the even length one is taking. So O n square plus O n square is still O n square. So we were able to solve this problem in O of n square. Thank you very much.